we have to take question? Two questions. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any question? Does anyone have a question? Okay, one question. Any other person? And, okay, sir, please. Question, please. We'll take that briefly. All right, thank you so much. Uh, please uh, let us know who you want to direct it to. Please introduce yourself also. Thank you. All right, uh, my name is Edmund Anozie. I actually work with Optiva Capital Partners. Uh, my question actually can go for anyone can answer the question. It's about uh, you know, bridging the gap. You understand? So what we're talking about, uh, closing the gap, we're talking about the people. You know, we're talking about the average Nigerians and the rich people. So we're talking about real estate investments. So what are the measures put in place by our developers? Or is there anybody that is in collaboration with the government? What we're talking about collaborating with the government to make things you know, easy and other. Are there already, I mean, unit or body that joins developers with the government to, you know, see about these things or to solve these problems? Thank you so much. Um, okay, I would like to answer you. So we have a body called Real Estate Developers Association of Nigeria, which is Redan. Um, so that body actually works um, in collaboration with the government. A lot of times when there are going to be policies and changes and things, they always have meetings. In fact, from time to time, we have meetings in Alausa, back to back, with different agencies. In fact, last week, we were still with Skumu, you know, for Money Laundry Act and all that. So there's a body, actually, um, that is responsible for that. But um, having every developer, you know, be a part of that association is what, you know, it's another thing, because we are not so, we don't have large, as much number of people we should have in that association yet. But we believe that at least we've started and it's uh, moving on fine. So there's a body called Redan that works with the government. And recently, there was a meeting that was even held and um, the governor you know, promised also to give Redan um, a parcel of land, like a lot of acres that you know, government wants to work with developers so they could use build houses for you know, individuals. So there's a lot of you know, things going on in collaboration with the government through Redan. At least that's much that I know. I don't know if my other fellow developers have other uh, things. Because of time, um, I would just like to ask the final question. Um, the question is on, um, we hear about collapse of buildings here and there. And it's unfortunate that these things happen, but they do happen and they take lives of people when that happens. Sometimes it's still, it's while the building is still under construction. Sometimes people are already inhabiting those um, properties. When we check it, we realize that yes, there were approvals given for all of this, but sometimes people, ex developers exceed, you know, what they're supposed to build on those properties. So my question is, why is this happening and how can this be curbed? How can this be curbed? Thank you. Yeah, two ways here. I, I, I would say the developer and the government are both responsible for these. And, and going back to the developer side, you know, I spoke about segmentation. The case where one person is the alpha and the omega, you are the owner of the project, you're the developer, you're the engineer, you operate it, you sell it, things like these are bound to happen, meaning that there are no checks and balances. And as long as you don't have things like that, sadly, we might still have something like that. And when it comes to the government part, the regulation, the bodies, and you know, I looked deeply into it and I realized that all these policies and all these laws are there. It's just they are not enforced. You have health and safety, you have everything, but somehow, somehow, there's compromise across board and some of these things pass. You know, the, 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 the body that's supposed to protect the end user is compromised already, so the end user just walks into a trap and you pay for what you didn't bargain for. So I think government and um, the developer has a very deep role to play if we're going to um, stop this thing. And as a, as a form of general advice to the public, I know when you're buying property, uh, the first thing is, the first and only thing sometimes is a lawyer. But I want to say that the way it is now, you probably have to get an engineer, ask for their structural drawing, get somebody to interpret and look at it. You know, when you begin to have that kind of, and it's something we're looking, services we're looking to provide, how can you advise for, for purchaser? 
you know, you have the lawyer already, your bank is probably going to fund it. Why don't you have a professional check, look at those things for you, and ask questions, you know? Mo most times, you don't know the right question to ask. You're just asking for, can you give me discount? Can it be affordable? There are other questions you can ask that will give you insight to whether the right thing is done or not. Thank you. Sorry, quickly, another thing. We are talking of developers. I want to talk from the point of government. So we have a project on Orchard Road. We're building 72 units, both um, flats and terrace houses. And then the Lagos State government comes to that site and says um, they, are, they sealed up actually all the project on Orchard Road from beginning to the end. And guess what? They bought a bill for um, building plan, whatever, whatever. And they bought a bill of over 400 million. And then the first question was, how much are we selling the houses? How much is the land? How much is the project that we will pay government for, for over 400 million? By the time we pay you 400 million, why won't developers start cutting corners? Now, the customers will be there saying, my project is being delayed. You are not doing my project. Government is selling. I know a developer I bought a property from in Ikoi. I couldn't talk to the, um, the developer because I'm also a developer. His project was sealed for two years. In that same Ikoi, because of um, um, building permits, payments, and approval. So the government also needs to look inward. You don't want people to cut corners. We want them to deliver. Why don't you make it also, you know, workable? Why don't you make it real? Why do you want to ask us to pay 400 million for a project of how much? How much did we buy the land? How much are we selling the houses? So if you don't want us to cut corners, which we don't want to cut corners, we will not even cut corners. So the government also should look inward at the kind of outrageous, you know, bill. The same thing on Ogombo Road. They will go there, seal the project, seal the gatehouse, you know, and put signs, come and pay. Then you see the bill, 100 million. So government also has a role to play in it. Let them also be realistic in the demands. You want we build houses in Dallas. For instance, Revolution Plus, we have a branch in Dallas, Texas. So we build houses, we sell houses in US. So nobody comes there to slam us charges of 100 million when we are building the houses. So why is it in Nigeria? So the government also has a role to play in all of this, not only developers. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Ma. Um, to be fair, because I want this to be balanced, so I will still have 30 seconds. If I, don't, I don't know if you want to also add something to it. Just like uh, Revolution Plus said, I think the compromise is coming because of the bills. Uh, for any developer, you want to cover your cost and make profit. And so both parties have to sit down. This is what Redan actually represents, where we interface with the government to make policies uh, that are enduring and also flexible for the off-takers. So I, I think uh, we should look more on this as we progress, especially in policy making and implementation. Time duration is a major issue. If you stop a project for one year, two years, I mean, you, you will see that inflation would have caught up and it has increased uh, the cost of, of delivery. As a result of that, you will see that, okay, how do I recover my money? Because you can't pass that cost to any other person and the end user is the person that will. So, that is where the compromise is coming from. But the advice is that we should do things right. And I believe it is possible. I don't know if Mr. Dia has a closing remark for us. Truth be told again. <laughs> there is no fault from the developer. All the fault is government. I submit a building plan. I want to do a project. Six months after, I don't have an approval. Because the government officials are deliberately frustrating it so that you go and start, then they come and slam you with the kind of bill they slammed my darling sister here. That's all. Now, why would I have land and sit down for six months, fold my arms, and wait for approval? In a nation where interest is high, hovering between 19 and sometimes 29% interest, where exchange rate is going at about 10% per 
growth every quarter. Then it's just not practically possible. That is why almost every developer flouts the law. Before approval is out, they have started building. And I don't blame them. I don't blame developers. That's why I said, when my brother said he's a developer, I said, if government would do, well, why should it take six months to study an architecture plan, an m and and a structure plan? I did building and civil engineering before I studied the civil management. I can give you, I can do all the calculations for the, for the structures and give you an approval or a rejection within 72 hours. Because when, you're, when the structural engineer is submitting, he's submitting his calculations and the basis so I can follow and see whether there's a fault. Surely in 72 hours you can do that. I still do, can't wrap my head around why approval cannot be out in 30 days. I have never understood why. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very. Can we please clap for our panelists? This has been a very, very impactful, insightful session. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, Ma. Um, I think on this note, we can also, yes, we can leave. But we'll take a group picture first. Thank